Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. We previously did a video that uh, CZU is potentially buying Colt. Uh, the, the, the process was underway. Well, it's now completed. Uh, so uh, there's some additional things that need to be done right now, but uh, there's been a there's been a complete uh, announcement by CZ uh, Czech Republic of the acquisition being completed. Uh, and as you guys know, I was extremely excited. Uh, the Firearms Log did an interview with CZ Czech Republic. And um, unfortunately, uh, my enthusiasm, which although it's still there, um, is just a little bit less than it was. Um, Fire's blog asked the important questions. Number one, do you plan on staying in Connecticut? And they said yes. That is a major issue. Um, the the cost of everything, of everything up there, the antiquated machinery, working in a state which is totally anti-gun, anti-what you do, is not a good situation. Uh it makes no sense to me why, if you're looking to bring this company back, you would keep them uh, in, a, in a state which has oppressed uh, their ability to to function. Um, so that yeah, that that was a little bit disturbing. But the part that was really disturbing was the fact that they said that they have no intention of changing Colt management, and in his words, the management was competent. Now. If you look at the word competent in the dictionary, I can guarantee you, you will not see cult management. You're looking at putting the same people in charge who brought the company down. So for them to claim that this management is competent and they want to keep them on, uh, that is extremely disturbing. That was one of the most important things uh, that was needed to bring this company back was new management. Now, you don't know if during the negotiations there was something said, okay, we'll keep these people uh, when this goes through, people protect their jobs or whatnot. You don't know if that was done. You also don't know if this is all just, uh, you know, the the initial uh, acquisition of the company. They're, they're keeping it and then they're going to make changes later, which I really, really hope. But in order for this company to succeed, it needs absolute new management. Now, as I said before, for Colt to succeed, it's not Phi Beta Kappa. You don't have to have an MBA in business to know what it needs to do. Now, I will talk about Colt Canada. Now, this is an excellent situation for Colt Canada because Colt Canada has always had competent management. Unfortunately, uh, when Colt went in there, they got rid of many of the good people. Um, so I don't know what the management situation is in Canada. But one of the benefits I will say for Canada is the Canadian military has been looking for a new replacement pistol for their well-aging Browning high powers for quite some time. And Canada also manufactures all their small arms in-house. They don't, uh, you know, they, they don't import guns. Uh, they're all made pretty much at the Colt Canada or DeMacco facility for the most part. With CZ coming in, CZ has the P-10. The P-10 is a military combat pistol. Now that you have the potential of manufacturing P-10 pistols at the Colt Canada facility, and now you're having a legitimate uh, source for Canada to finally update their 9mm pistols to a modern combat pistol, which is the you know the P10, P10C. So getting back to Colt, Colt USA. Well, as I've said, what needs to happen for this company to succeed, if you look at what Colt management's done in the recent years, they've dropped their you know, they dropped their production of the M4 for quite some time uh, because of false uh, marketing information and very bad uh, logic on there not being a demand for it. They brought back a revolver. Now, when they brought back the revolver, the Python, as we know, was iconic. The gun that people got, unfortunately, wasn't a Python. If you bring back a gun, you're bringing back a complete design. So when they reintroduced the Python, what they brought back to you was not a fully redesigned trigger group. So is that truly a Python? No, it's not. Python 2, Python 2020, Python 2021, maybe. But to introduce it as a Python when it's a completely different gun, and then when they rolled out, they had problems. As great as it was, they came out with a with a Python-type revolver. That company is designed, its function is military contracts, large-scale uh, uh, manufacturing, mass production. They have not come out with any product that will keep those doors going indefinitely. Uh, with offering modern products that a military or law enforcement agency can use. The M4, and in, in what they're producing, is rather antiquated compared to what's being made by other companies. Uh, they're still making 1995 uh, U.S. government M4s. Uh, they have not 
gone moved forward with their development of any new products that would be able to compete with modern military. So what Colt Management Competent has done, they brought back a revolver that's a boutique rifle, a boutique revolver that most people can't afford, that's not going to be produced in the numbers and sold in the numbers that are going to sustain that company. They've made no modifications to their AR-15 or M4. They're still making the same thing. They have nothing to offer uh, to keep a, ma- a company that's designed around mass production going. What needs to happen? It's very, very simple. New management to come in and say, here's the requirements for the XM-17 program. This is what the requirements were. Throw it on the table, have Colt hire competent engineers or bring back some of their competent engineers and say, build me a pistol that's not a 1911 that will make that it'll meet this requirement. We want a pistol that we can compete with in the international market. Because as we said, Colt's competent management, as, as CZ called it, for the first time in history, uh, the XM-17 program, there was no Colt entry. The first time in our history that there was not an entry from Colt for a small arms replacement program. And if you look at this new modern uh, re- replacement, it's supposed to replace the M4. If you noticed, there was no Colt entry in that either because there's no engineering, there's no product development. They also need someone to go in there and say, we need to develop a new rifle, a new modern rifle and modern calibers to compete on the open market. It's not an M4. It's not an M16. We need a new weapons platform that's going to uh, compete. So under current management, that hasn't happened, and it hasn't happened f- uh, since 1995 uh, with Colt's new production. With new production, so I don't see how uh, unless Colt, unless CZ is going to send people into Colt Hartford and micromanage what happens there and be there to. Uh, affect daily operations and to point them in the new direction, I don't see how this is going to really be beneficial to, you know, to Colt. Um, CZ has still been a little bit vague uh, in any, even more with the firearms blog of what their what their plans are. Uh, but from my perspective of being in the inside, knowing what this company's history is and how it works, by keeping them in Connecticut and keeping uh, the same management, that, that to me does not show uh, any kind of progression is going to be effective because Colt already had the issue when they went bankrupt. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't five beta cap of why they went bankrupt because of lack of uh, new development, lack of engineering, lack of innovation, uh, failures on marketing for as far as it's for commercial sales. The other thing that they need to do if they want to succeed is they have to reinvent themselves. People are pissed at Colt um, because of decisions they've made against the commercial market, whatnot. Colt needs to be reintroduced as a brand new company under new management if they have any hope of getting the people uh, that they've lost back as customers. It needs to be brought out as we are not the same. We are under totally different management. We are under competent management. We are going to be listening to the customers. We're going to be giving them what they want. They need CC needs to distance themselves from the Colt that status quo and bring them back as a new company under new management with new everything. Um, and by them keeping that management there, they're not doing that. They're bringing it's the same old Colt. Uh, there's not much, there's not m- much different. Um, I think CZ needs to be a little bit more uh, out with what their plans are and what they're going to do differently. Because if they want this company to succeed, everything has to be revamped. They can't, there's, there's nothing. If you were to look at a business model for a gun manufacturer, you look at Colt, that's exactly what you don't do. Uh, you look at a company that was on top uh, and then, you know, they were, the, they were they were a mecca for small arms development to the point now where most people who are in the international arms market don't even consider Colt as viable. Now, CZ did say that uh, they look at how the two companies will mesh. Well, uh, you know, as far as revolvers are concerned, CZ doesn't have revolvers. Uh, they do run Dan Wesson. So you're going to have two uh, companies who are going to be competing who are owned by the same with, with, with CZ and Dan Wesson. Now, if you look at Colt, you know, Python, Python 2, whatever you want to call it, that is a, again, it's a boutique revolver that is expensive. It's, a t- it's the most expensive in the industry. So is it really going to compete with Dan Wesson? Probably not. Uh, and also, if you look at rifles, the M4 is a totally different weapons pr- platform than the, than the, the Bren 805, uh, as well as the, the Bren 2. Uh, they're totally different uh, different weapons platforms. Uh, Some automatic pistols. <laughs> Obviously, CZ doesn't make 1911. CZ makes modern pistols for modern law enforcement, modern military. I'm sure there's uh, they've had they're they're planning on bringing some of that production of their uh, their pistol line and even potentially their rifle line to uh, to Colt here. You know, um, 
looking at what they're doing in Arkansas and looking at uh, the other places that CZ has made guns here in the U.S., it makes no sense why you wouldn't bring Colt to one of those facilities. Um, because, again, you would want a modernized Colt with new machinery, uh, you know, a less antiquated facility. You know, Colt Hartford, you know, anybody who's been to that plant knows that it's in disarray. You know, um, the, you know, the, the factory, all the rust on the walls, it's, uh, you know, I remember, you know, you know, being there, we were embarrassed to bring overseas customers there because of how bad the company looked. You know, you feel like you needed a tetanus shot to open the door to the factory because of all the rust and the broken windows and how dirty it was and, and how antiquated the machines were, um, which was not the case with, uh, with Colt Canada. So, I mean, certainly, uh, I'm still excited of, of what the potential could be um, and what CZ is going to find once they really get in there and see what the problems are. But uh, I really hope that uh, the location and the management were just initial steps that uh, will be changed later. I see it's a complete win in Canada. Uh, as long as the management that's up there is left, I'd love to see them bring Jeff McLeod back uh, because Jeff McLeod was a, was a very successful um uh, CEO of Tobacco Colt Canada. Um, again, their engineers they have up there are awesome. That's a company that just needs to be, just leave them alone. Uh, bring them some P10 manufacturing up there so they can uh, provide to the Canadian military. You have success here. There's a lot more work to be done with uh, with Colt here in the U.S. So um, I, as you can imagine, I'll be watching this very closely, seeing what what goes on. But uh, as I said, the key things uh, that I thought were important. Uh, you know, the announcement from CZ uh, Czech Republic is, is is not done. But we certainly will keep you abreast on the situation. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.